Hi, I'm Thomas Barnes. I'm a writer-director and I teach directing craft at the New York Film Academy. One of the things that I like to focus on when working with the actors is their tasks and the blocking of the scene. Focusing on what they're doing and focusing on their movement instead of focusing on the emotions in the scene are sometimes really productive ways to get to the emotions in the scene. You got the wrong guy, pal. So in other words, instead of thinking about the emotions that they've got to deliver, they're thinking about what they've got to do, and the actors are not self-conscious about their feelings, but the feelings are gonna come through anyway because the scene is written like that, and that's what the scene is about. But if you have them focused on physical tasks, it can be incredibly uh, releasing of the emotions of the scene as a whole. So one scene that I really love for that is in Kramer vs. Kramer, where Dustin Hoffman's character is dealing with being a sort of single father for the first time, and he's got a five-year-old kid to deal with. And in this scene, he sort of wants to show the kid that everything is fine, that even though mum is gone, you'll be just fine without mum. So the scene begins, and he sort of storms into the kitchen like a general, very confidently. Come on, now, you and I are going to have some breakfast, OK? Just you and me. OK, what do you want for breakfast? French toast. French toast, you want the French toast you got. Even in the way you walk for an actor, you, you're telling a story. And in this moment, he's showing a kind of fake bravado. And the kid follows in, hopeful of a great breakfast. And Dustin Hoffman gets to work in the kitchen. And the tasks that have been worked out by the actor presumably with the director, have been to show this guy's in constant movement, very erratic, trying to do all these things like make the French toast but not knowing how to and busting up the bread and dunking it into the egg, which splashes everywhere. I think you forgot the milk. I didn't, uh, milk comes last. You always gotta put the milk in last. When you're having a good time, you forget the most important thing, right? I just wanna see if you were paying attention. It's been a long time since I made this. That's fun, isn't it? There's a kettle whistling madly in the background. He's plunging the coffee press, but the coffee is too much coffee and it's, it's about to overflow. All these little details adding to the kind of physical stresses, it ratchets through the scene and it goes from him being very confident to him being a nervous breakdown by the end, pretty much. Uh, and the physicality of it all, where he ends up burning himself on a hot iron skillet. really shown that through the physical performance, through the physical detail of the scene, the emotional breakdown of the character and also the fear that the son has all being kind of realized in the actions of trying to make French toast. Now, how much more interesting is that to watch than two characters sitting there discussing how they feel? And how much more exciting is it for the actors to work on a scene like that full of physical detail, which is bringing out the emotional part of the scene in a subtextual way and bringing it alive and making us feel it rather than think about it or listen to it, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, man. I will never forgive your ass for this shit. This is some fucked up repugnant shit. So encourage the actors to interact with tactile things and give them opportunities to do that. There's a very famous story about how Marlon Brando in The Godfather, in the opening scene, he's introduced with a, a little cat that's sitting on his lap. We've known each other many years, but this is the first time you ever came to me for counsel for help. And this is not in the script. Apparently, Francis Coppola had seen this little cat wandering around on the studio lot and grabbed it just before they shot and shoved it in Brando's lap. And Brando, who's famously loved animals, you know, liked the idea. And, and so the scene is, is wonderful because he is a really powerful mafia don and he's in his office and all these people are listening to him and it, he could have played it in a very sort of uh, serious and somber way but, but you get instead a relaxed man playing with his cat and in a way all the more powerful because he doesn't need to pretend to be tough or strong. You see a man in his own world and that's Don Corleone. Now you come to me and you say, Don Corleone, and give me justice. But you don't ask with respect. You don't offer friendship. You don't even think to call me Godfather. That's an example, I think, of, of how a, 
a prop or an animal in this case, can give life to a scene, can free up the actors, can tell a story about the characters, and, you know, just great little detail like that. So if you're a director, always look for those opportunities. They may not be in the, the script, but if you see a prop or you have an idea like that, discuss it with the actor. Very often the actors themselves will bring these ideas up. Be open to them if you're a director, because these are the things that might bring the scene to life.